let's uh, take it to the magic board and uh, try to understand what actually constitutes this uh, land question. Uh, what are the types of uh, uh, tenure in Uganda? There are actually four as it stands right now. There could be a Milo land, it could be freehold land, it could be a, a leasehold land, or it could be a customary land. Now, where it gets interesting is uh, the fact that uh, uh, the first and the most prominent is, of course, uh, the customary tenure system uh, under which land ownership is uh, governed uh, by cultural norms and practices. A lot of uh, the national land, of course, uh, coverage is uh, with the customary tenure. Uh, the second is the Milo land, which was established after the 1900 Buganda Agreement. You might remember that from uh, your days back in uh, primary school. It is uh, mostly crown land that uh, functions on a tenancy system. Majority of it was given to the collaborators of uh, the British colonial government. That's, of course, on the eve of us becoming a protectorate. The third is the freehold tenure system where individuals own and, of course, they have land titles and uh, can bequeath the land. The fourth and uh, final one, last but not least, is uh, the leasehold of tenure system under which the owners can give leases to tenants to develop their land. Fascinating indeed. Uh, to help us uh, just unpack uh, this particular conversation around the land issue, we do have a lawyer in the studio, uh, Aaron uh, Chiza. Uh, Aaron, thanks for making time to speak to us. This uh, uh, land question, Aaron, um, we just listened to uh, uh, the Archbishop of our Church of Uganda, um, he, he, he's mentioned something that's quite disturbing. Uh, over the years, uh, over close to even 50 years or past 50 years, uh, some of generous people, uh, uh, Christians or even non-Christians, donated or gave, uh, bequeathed their land to uh, 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 the, the church, but they were not necessarily uh, writing down. Um, the law aspect of this, is this the, the, the wake-up call that uh, we should actually be worried if there are no papers and titles per se? Yeah, it's a point of concern. Indeed, it's one of the wake-up calls because the world has changed. Mm. Uh, it, we no longer live in a very innocent world whereby you could trust someone's word and treat one's word as his bond. And I think his... He's actually very right. Some people innocently, though naively, now they're appearing, just gave land to the church either by word of mouth or by any other system that, uh, can, that is susceptible to date because of either legal mechanics or changing realities. So the church has to be very proactive and it has to, take to undertake a comprehensive uh, audit of the holding, land holding it has, so that uh, it is shielded from, first of all, the mafia, secondly, the fraudsters, and also people who change their minds, who are beneficial, who are offsprings of, of previous donors, but change their mind or think they were not consulted the, the, and so on. The, the, let me just pause you there, Arid. Uh, the, you've mentioned something that's interesting. Uh, give me a sense of the legal aspects. If Arnold here, I, I, I give away a, a chunk of land to the, to the church, and then my child, after my, uh, my demise, uh, changes his mind. Uh, what are the legal proceedings there? Yeah, now it depends on how decisive or how formal you were in bestowing or bequeathing the land to the church or any other individual. If you did it informally, casually, then you're rendering the beneficiary susceptible. Mm. If you did it in a very decisive manner, involving the, for example, the, the chancellor of the of the church or the legal people and the formal institutions and you concretize it and you buffer it with the necessary steps then you are safer because in that case even a change of mind of the offsprings of the issues would not vitiate but if you leave it weak mm. then a change of mind could indeed lead you into this kind of legal conundrum that we are facing. Uh, we're actually running out of time Aaron. Um, the situation right now, as it stands, um, there is on one end uh, a party that is saying uh, we got this land legally. Uh, there's another side that there's a lot of fraud. Let me not ask a long question. There's fraud on so many sides involved. Uh, don't even get me started on uh, the, the side of some of the legal enforcers. What could be a best case scenario if you are the church? 
your other charge, um, you have to ensure that all your leases are renewed timely, that you know that you, you, you undertake a comprehensive review status report of how you, the land you're sitting on is. But it's not just the church to be very uh, more serious than it is now, but also the people trying to deal with these kinds of land where numerous people are. You don't just come at night and demolish it. So both sides have to do some reckoning and uh, mutual accommodation. Aaron, many thanks for making time to speak to us. Uh, Aaron Jiza, who happens to be a lawyer, just uh, giving us the technicalities of uh, a thing we call land, a very uh, contentious asset in today's Uganda.